I can't reach the water. Wait a minute. Objects occupy space. These centimeter plastic cubes will occupy space in the water and make the level rise. The more plastic cubes there are in the water, the higher the water level. Now I can drink the water! <laughs> I'm so clever! <laughs> oh, Alice! Oh, you are a silly bird! Oh, why's that? If you want to drink some water, then all you have to do is ask me! You went the cubes I need for volume studies! Oh, I'm so sorry, Alice! And what was it about volume you were studying, huh? I don't have time to explain. I have to go out now! You're going out now? Oh! Take me with you. I'd really like to go out, too. I've got things to do, so you can't come with me. I'm sorry. Oh, go on, please. <sighs> All right. You want to go out? Then go! have to stop scaring me like that. Well, I thought you had things to do, so what are they? Oh, my teacher's given me two stones. I have to find out how big they are. I have to come up with an idea for an appropriate way of measuring their volumes and surface areas. Look, there's a shopping mall. We can get some ideas there. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Can you smell that bread? Delicious! Huh? When a square loaf is cut with a slicer, every slice of bread has the same shape. Hmm. Ah, and circular bread can be cut into circular slices too! Yes, that's right! That's because both the square and round loaves are prisms. Really? But how can they be prisms? Oh, so that's how you recognize a prism. Oh. Ooh! Yes, she's quite... circular top and base is called a circular cylinder and this one with a quadrilateral top and base is called a quadrilateral prism hmm. and this piece of cake here and this cheese they must also be prisms that's quite right this piece of cake here has uniform triangular cross sections therefore it is a prism we call it a triangular prism this piece of cheese has uniform hexagonal cross-sections. Therefore, it is also a prism. We call it a hexagonal prism. Oh, and how about this Easter egg? The sizes of the cross-sections from one end to the other are not uniform in this case. So the Easter egg is not a prism. What about you, bird? Hmm? A your prism? Let me see. No, wait! You can't cut me up into pieces. I promise, I'm not a prism. Honest, I'm not! <laughs> <laughs> Mister, 
You have so many things for sale. Do you have something that might help me find out the volume of this stone here, please? Hmm. <laughs> this container and the displacement method. The displacement method? Partly fill the container with water. And mark the water level. Then place the stone in the water, making sure it's completely immersed. Then measure the new water level. The volume of the stone is equal to the volume of water displaced in the circular cylinder. By calculating the volume of the circular cylinder, you can calculate the volume of the stone. How do you calculate the volume of a circular cylinder? Hmm, I don't know. I only know how to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism or cuboid. Volume is length times width times height. Since length times width equals the area of the base, the volume of a cuboid equals base area times height. Easy to remember, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yes, but the volumes of other prisms also equal to base area times height. Take this wooden ornament. Does it give you any ideas? This solid ornament is made up of many cuboids. The volume of the solid equals the total volumes of the cuboids. As the volume of a cuboid equals base area times height, and all the cuboids have the same height, we can first add together the areas of all the rectangular bases. Then multiply that figure by the height. In other words, the volume is the total sum of the base areas times height. If each cuboid is further divided into smaller cuboids, the base of the solid is close to a triangle. So the solid will be close to a triangular prism. In other words, the total sum of the base areas is about the same as the area of a triangle. And its volume is about the same as that of a triangular prism. Therefore, the volume of a triangular prism equals the area of the triangular base times the height. In other words, its base area times height. Oh, so a triangular prism's volume and a cuboid's volume are both calculated using base area times height. Mm. That's fine, but what use is it? We can use the same formula to calculate the volume of a hexagonal prism. Hmm, very clever. Hey, come over here. Now, we can divide a hexagonal prism into four separate triangular prisms. That means that the volume of the hexagonal prism equals the sum of the volumes of the four triangular prisms. As the volume of a triangular prism is equal to base area times height, and as the heights of these triangular prisms are the same, we first add up the areas of the four triangular bases and then multiply by the height. This is the same as the base area of the hexagonal prism times its height. Hmm, so the volume of a hexagonal prism equals its base area times its height. Hmm. So do you think the volume of a circular cylinder is also equal to its base area times its height? Maybe it is. Why don't we try it and see? Hmm. Hmm. Now, take a close look at this cylinder and this prism here, and then tell me if you see a relationship between them. Hmm? Let's look at this hexagonal prism. If we change it into a prism with a 12-sided polygonal base like this, and then into a prism with a 24-sided polygonal base, and so on, then the volume of the prism gets closer and closer to that of a circular cylinder. When the volume of a prism is about the same as that of a circular cylinder, its base area is nearly the same as the area of a circle. Therefore, the volume of a circular cylinder is also equal to its base area times its height. Oh, yes, I understand now. For a prism, no matter whether it's a circular cylinder or any other type of prism, its volume is equal to base, base area, area times, times height. height. What's more, as the horizontal cross-sections are the same from its base to its top, the volume of a prism is also equal to the area of a horizontal cross-section times height. Mm. Mister, mm. some of these ornaments have given me some ideas.
That's good. We'll take a look round. You might find something useful. Well, I have to go home to measure the volume of my stone. Maybe some other time. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Come on. <laughs> bye bye. I forgot to drink anything before I went out. I think I'll drink this fruit juice. Hmm, that's a good idea. We walked such a long way, didn't we? The label on the side of that can says it contains 330 milliliters. How can we be sure? Let me think a moment. Well, you could work it out for yourselves. Look, this can here is a circular cylinder. Just use the formula for calculating a cylinder's volume, and you'll have the volume of your can. The volume of a circular cylinder equals its base area times its height. The base area is the area of a circle, that is, pi times the radius squared. Therefore, the volume of a cylinder equals pi times the radius squared times its height. If we use r to represent the radius and h to represent the height, then the volume of a circular cylinder becomes pi times r squared times h. Luckily, I have my calculator and tape measure with me. Let me measure the radius and height of the can. The height is about 12 centimeters. The diameter is about 6 centimeters. So the radius is about 3 centimeters. Therefore, the volume of this can is pi times 3 squared times 12 equals about 340 cubic centimeters. 340 cubic centimeters is 340 milliliters, which is a lot of juice, isn't it? What do you think? Am I an expert at calculating? <laughs> yes, you're brilliant. Do you hear that? I'm brilliant! Hooray! All right, that's quite enough of that. Now get out of here, you hear? Yes, madam. Hello, students. That's much quieter. That noisy bird has been changed into a milk carton. How much space do you think the milk carton occupies? The space it occupies is exactly the volume of the carton. So what is the volume of the milk carton? Is the carton a prism? Is its volume equal to the area of the base times its height? No, that's right. How about equal to this base times this height? Discuss it amongst yourselves. Well now, students. How would you calculate the volume of a piece of cheese this shape? Well, let me give you a few hints. all over me. I have to go home and take a shower quickly. I hope that teaches you to behave yourself. Oh, look at this. He's the king of the dried mandarin skins. He can peel a mandarin quicker than anybody else. When the skins of the mandarins are spread out flat, they're all different sizes, of course. But do you think that the sizes of the skins reflect the sizes of the mandarins? Uh, I've no idea at all. You don't? Then why don't you ask? When the skin of a mandarin is spread out, it forms the net of the mandarin's surface, just like the nets of the surfaces of these prisms. Can you tell me what use a net has? Why ask me? Why don't you ask the king of mandarin skins? The area of the net equals the surface area of the solid. The net of the cuboid represented here is made up of six rectangles. Two of them are the base and the top of the cuboid, while the other four are the side faces of the cuboid. Therefore, the surface area of the cuboid equals the sum of the areas of these six rectangles. If we take the lengths of the cuboid sides as A, B, and C respectively, then the length of the sides of the rectangles are, and the areas of each rectangle are, therefore, the surface area of the cuboid equals 2 times 
AB plus BC plus CA. Hmm, I get it. Now then let me try to find the surface area of a hexagonal prism. Tell me if I'm right. The net of a hexagonal prism looks like this. It has a hexagonal base and top and six rectangular faces. The surface area equals the total area of base and top plus the total area of faces. So in this case, the surface area equals the areas of two hexagons plus the total area of six rectangles. You learn quickly. You're a clever bird. All right, let me try one. Let's assume that the radius of the base of a cylinder is R and the height of the cylinder is H. When the curved surface of the cylinder is spread out, it forms a rectangle. Its length equals the circumference of the circular base, that is 2 times pi times r. Its width equals the height, h. So the area of the curved surface equals 2 times pi times r times h. In other words, 2 pi r h. The total area of the base and top equals the sum of the areas of two circles, that is twice pi times r squared. So the surface area of a circular cylinder equals the areas of two circles plus the area of a rectangle. Oh, you're really clever. Well then, if the surface area of one prism is bigger than that of another one, does it mean that its volume will be bigger too? Mm. I have to go now. Do me a favor. I need a carton. Could you make one using this piece of cardboard? That's easy. I'll use the cardboard to make a large rectangular box. The first thing to do is divide the cardboard into five equal parts. The width of each part will be 0.3 meters. Then we take the four complete parts to make up the side faces of the cuboid. Next, we cut two squares with sides 0.3 meters long from the remaining incomplete part. These form the top and base of the cuboid. We end up with a cuboid measuring 0.3 meters long, 0.3 meters wide, and 1 meter high. The volume of this cuboid is 0.09 cubic meters, and its surface area is 1.38 square meters. Hmm, that's very good. But you missed something. Huh? Huh? Look, it's my teacher. Amongst others. Well, anyone you recognize? Oh, so then it's you who've been helping us to find the volume and surface area of a prism. Of course it is. Now, one more question for you. Is there another way to divide this piece of cardboard and make a carton whose volume is larger than the first carton? Maybe. Let me think. Yes, I can divide it up this way. I use two squares with 0.5 meter sides as the base and top of the cuboid and four rectangles of 0.4 meters times 0.5 meters each as the side faces. This will give me a cuboid 0.5 meters long, 0.5 meters wide, and 0.4 meters high. That's very clever. Hooray! I did it! I did it! All right, that's quite enough. Now be off with you. Yes, sir. Where is she? Where is she gone to? I'm right here, silly. Can't you see? Oh, I was afraid you disappeared. Hey, what was that? 